Hello, this is Miss Sassik with our Revolutionary War Battles video part one. Make sure you have your battles notes out and something to write with, because here we go. We're starting off first with Lexington and Concord. We had discussed this a little bit in class. It was the first fighting of the revolution, also known as the shot heard around the world. Uh, this is when local militia had met with the Redcoats at dawn in the village of Lexington and had uh, been warned, thanks to people like Paul Revere, William Dawes, and Dr. Prescott, and they were able to assemble at Lexington and try and fight off the British. Um, the militia was forced to retreat to Concord, where they met up with uh, um, another contingent of British soldiers. Here in the militia were able to chase back these soldiers um, back to Boston and along the roads back, they were um, the colonists riding behind fences and um, plants um, and shooting at the British soldiers who were wearing bright red coats. So it was very easy to identify the British. And these militiamen uh, chased the British back 16 miles back to the Boston um, city. Our next battle is called Bunker Hill, the Battle of Bunker Hill. First major battle of the war on June 17, 1775. Now, uh, this was across Boston, if you look at the map to the right. Across the city of Boston, the Charles River, there are um, several hills overlooking the city. And these were very strategic areas, especially if you're in the military, because if you have control of the high ground and the hills, you're able to see um, all around you geographically. And here you're able to see what's going on in the surrounding rivers and what's going on in Boston. So this was uh, to gain control over the hills. So the Americans really tried hard. They fought bravely, but they had to retreat. They ran out of bullets and ran out of ammo. So they were forced to retreat um, back up, as you see on the map, back uh, to the northwest. And they actually got the name wrong. Actually, the fighting first occurred on Breed's Hill, as you see, was at the beginning, closer to Boston. And then they retreated to Bunker Hill. And then eventually they had to retreat back. So here you see the British soldiers were marching up the hill. Now, initially, the um, colonists, they had an advantage because you know, we were attacking on top of a hill, on top of a high ground. You can see, as I said, everything that's going on. However, there was just so many British, and they were, you know, had better, more supplies than the colonists, so the British were able to overtake them. And in this picture, you see this is actually from um, the Breed's Hill Bunker Hill uh, Monument. And you can see how important this is because there's modern day Boston. And you can see, as you can imagine back then, not nearly as many buildings as there were. So you would have easily seen um, what was going on in the city. Okay, our next battle is called Trenton, Battle of Trenton, or famously known as you see in the picture to the right, the crossing of the Delaware. Now this occurred, if you look at the date, started on Christmas Eve and it went through the day after Christmas in 1776. So this was several months after the Declaration of Independence. So we are now officially, you know, a country, the United States of America. And Washington wanted to, um, was aware that the Hessians, the Germans, they are mercenary, they are soldiers hired by Britain to help them out. They knew, he knew that they were in New Jersey in a town called Trenton. So um, he was in a time where it was really hard and morale was really low. People were really, you know, kind of sad. Things weren't going so hot. And so he knew he had to do something really, um, really outstanding to keep these soldiers with him for longer because their enlistments were about to expire. So he got his men to cross the river in the middle of the night on Christmas Eve, and uh, they marched to Trenton, and they, the, by dawn, they su surprised the sleeping Hessians, and they surrendered. I mean, think about it. It's Christmas. People were, the Hessians were celebrating. They had stayed up late. They were partying, and then when they woke up, they definitely weren't ready to see uh, the American army outside their door. So they surpri they were surprised, and they, were sur they surrendered easily. And... Um, as Washington's victory helps the morale, people stay on, and he's able to continue going this war for a lot longer. 
So there you see how the Americans surrounded um, town where the British, or the, excuse me, the Hessians were. Here's Saratoga. Saratoga is known as the turning point. So this was a year, uh, over a year after, almost a year after the Battle of Trenton. September 9th, 1777, the British Army was trying to divide the colonies. Okay, they were trying to divide the New England and, you know, New York from New England, um, and then the southern part, so Philadelphia and all the southern colonies. They knew if they took over, then they could split them up, and it would be a lot more difficult for uh, people in the colonies to communicate and to um, gather. So the British Army... Um, was lured into a trap by the Americans and they were surrounded. And uh, the British could do nothing but surrender. They were forced to surrender and 5,000 troops uh, were captured. It was a huge, huge deal. So here you see uh, painting interpreting the surrender of the British and you see George in the middle. And you see the Americans, and you see the surrender. And this was a huge deal because the um, French and the Spanish were very reluctant to help the Americans. We had delegates over there talking to them, trying to persuade them to give us some support, and they weren't quite sold yet. They didn't want to get into something that was a losing battle because at this point, Americans weren't winning a lot of battles. Um, and it was looking pretty bad. So once they saw this happen, they realized that, oh gosh, the Americans could really have something to go here. So let's, let's get involved. So now we have Valley Forge in the winter of 1777 through 1778. So George Washington and his men were stuck outside Philadelphia, or Philly, as I like to say, for a long, cold winter. The Continental Army was um, cold, hungry, sick, wounded. Um, they didn't have a lot of supplies. You see the rice in the um, picture. Uh, I've read that many, uh, a lot of the soldiers had a diet of rice and vinegar. You hear stories about them eating, you know, scr scraps off their boots or whatever. Uh, you hear, and they wrapping their feet with scraps of cloth, and it was just a really dire situation. Um, a lot of people, you know, being out in the cold, very bad, not a lot of supplies, um, shelter. A lot of people got sick. Um, and it was very a frustrating time for everybody. And so um, a lot of people could have given up at this point, but the army instead joined together. Um, as the winter wore off, they began to train harder and began to have a stronger bond, especially when you um, survive such dire situations. Um, you become stronger and you're more determined to be successful. Okay, this is the end of our video. And we will see you in class. Thanks.